just take a dropper, a couple drops of sap, put it right on that lens, right like that. Close the cover, make a big mess because it splattered everywhere. Hey guys, welcome back to B&B Farms, where our goal is to try and live with our land and not just on it. Today we are back in the maple syrup sugar house. We're actually in the, the clean room or the finished room. You might hear a bit of an echo in here. This room is all clad in metal on the inside. It makes it easy to wipe it down and keep it clean. So I apologize for the echo. We're just gonna have to put up with that for a little bit. Today I wanna to talk about measuring the amount of sugar that is in your maple sap. Uh, maybe that's not such an, uh, an important deal to, to a lot of you, and in many cases it isn't, but it can be useful to get some idea of how much yield in gallons of finished maple syrup you can expect from a given amount of sap. And that's what knowing the sugar content can do for you. Uh, the rule of thumb says if you take the number 87 and divide it by the percentage of sugar that's in your maple sap, you can get a rough idea of what your yield should be. Uh, for example, if your sap runs 2% sugar, we take 87, divide it by two, we know that we're gonna need, you know, roughly 43 and a half to one. So 43 and a half gallons of water boiled out of your, your, your maple sap will leave you one gallon of maple syrup. And that's not exactly the accurate way to put that, but uh, I think it's good enough for the purposes that we're going to, you know, use here today. Uh, there are some different ways of measuring that sugar content. I want to turn you around here and we'll get into this. First off is a sap hydrometer, which is just a, a, a weighted tube, glass tube. Um, you put it in here. I'll just show you. This is actually a syrup uh, test cup, but it'll work for demonstration purposes. You fill that test cup with sap, and you lower that hydrometer into it. Again, this this test cup is not deep enough for this for this particular hydrometer because this is made for finished syrup, but it'll illustrate okay. So you lower it down in there, and wherever it floats, I hope you guys can see those, those markings on there, it will tell you what the percentage, you know, you can see it marked in 2, 4, 6, 8, it will tell you the sugar content of that batch of sap. It's pretty accurate too. We don't even have a test cup for that, that maple sap hydrometer, however. We tend to just take it and we just drop it right in our sap storage tank and just let it float in the tank. And it just, you know, kind of bobs around and moves around in there. It gives a pretty instant visual indication of how much sugar is in that sap. Okay, this is the basic way to do it. Let's, go, let's move up in, in technology a little bit. I'll show you another way. We'll get that out of the way before we drop it and break it. I'll set that over there. Next, we have a refractometer, a, a tool where you flip this cover up, put a drop of sap there on that blue strip you see, and hold it up to the light and look through it and there's a scale in it. I'll try to get some sap on it and show you guys how it works. There's a scale when you look through this eyepiece right here that will indicate how much sugar is in the, uh, in the sap. All right, that's, that's what we've been using, you know, gosh, for several years. This year, we got something a little different. We're gonna go with a digital refractometer. This happens to be the Milwaukee MA871. Yeah, MA871 digital refractometer. Important note, we are not associated with Milwaukee. Uh, this, is, this is not a, a paid sponsored video. Uh, uh, we bought this with our own money. We're just gonna try it out, see how it works for us. All right, back to it. So how this works is once you calibrate it, you turn it on, you just put you know, enough sap down in this well to cover that, that, that lens down there and it should give you an instant readout of how much sugar is in your sap. So let's, uh, let's do a little demonstration here. You know, it got up to almost 50 degrees a couple days ago, and we have a test tree that we put one tap in, and it actually gave us a little bit of sap. So I've got some here, and I'll show you how this works. Just take a dropper, a couple drops of sap, put it right on that lens, right like that. 
close the cover make a big mess because it splattered everywhere and look at it through the light I don't know if that's going to focus well enough for you to see it or not maybe you can get an idea of what I'm talking about when you can see a very distinct line between that 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 white and that blue on that scale All right, so you've seen how an optical refractometer works, so I, I hope you're able to see that anyway. Uh, that's one. Obviously, we don't have enough sap this early in the season to float the hydrometer, so you have to take my word for it that all you do is just chunk it in there and let it bob, kind of like a fishing float. That leaves the, the new digital refractometer. Let's try it out and see how it compares to the optical refractometer operation of the Milwaukee digital refractometer is pretty simple. We're just going to turn it on. Wait for a row of dashes across the screen. There we go. And we're going to take our maple sap. We're going to fill this well until it covers the lens. And then we're going to hit this read button right there. 2.9% sugar according to the digital refractometer. So that's how you can measure sugar content in your maple sap. Uh, you're probably wondering why there was a, a discrepancy between the optical refractometer and the digital. Uh, I will tell you that I calibrated the new digital refractometer. It comes with a bottle of solution that you used to do that with. And I calibrated that right before the test to ensure that it is, you know, as accurate as possible. Whereas the optical refractometer, it has set in this sugar house since last season, I did not calibrate it, and it is not temperature compensating either, whereas the digital Milwaukee unit is temperature compensating. So that probably explains the difference right there. Uh, either way, we're excited to put it to the test this year. We're going to use it to judge what our sugar content is and the sap that goes into our reverse osmosis unit versus what that same sugar content is coming out of the reverse osmosis unit. So yeah, we're looking forward to that. I think that's going to wrap this video up. I know it was super quick. Uh, that was the intent of it. Uh, we're hopefully be in the woods soon. We've got another week to 10 days of Arctic weather. Uh, but hopefully that'll break and we'll be out here making some maple syrup. Guys, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I know everybody tells you that. It's really important. It helps us out a lot. We appreciate it. Get outside. It's beautiful out there. Beautiful day. Get outside. Make some maple syrup. Run a chainsaw. Take a walk in the woods. You'll be a better person for it. I know you will. Remember to be nice. Yep, still a crazy world out there. Doesn't cost anything to be nice. Guys, thanks for sticking with us. I'll see you on the next video.